Greetings, geniuses. Let's talk about just a couple of the many, many applications of determinants. And one of these is a great formula. If you have three ordered pairs, you can find an area of a triangle with a determinant, as we see here. Um, notice there are two different poss possibilities for this. Um, plus or minus, this plus or minus, and that does come into play, but part of it's just kind of like we need the absolute value of all of this because an area is always going to be positive, but we will see where that plus or minus becomes a player uh, on problem number 12 shortly. So this gives us our area, and let's go ahead and take a look at that in action. I'll just rewrite that formula down here. The area is plus or minus one half times, as you can see, I just put the ordered pairs in, and then I augment with 1. Great formula. x1, y1, 1. x2, y2, 1. x3, y3, 1. Or in this case, a equals plus or minus the determinant of negative 3, 5, 1, 2, 6, 1, 3, negative 5, 1. Worth double checking that before we go to calculator. Negative 3, 5, 2, 6, 3, negative 5. Oh, good thing I double checked that part. So here we go. We know the area is going to be positive, so I'm going to go into matrix. I'm going to edit my first matrix. And I do have a 3 by 3 here, but I need negative 3, 5, 1, 2, 6, 1, 3, negative 5, 1. I'm going to double check that. Negative 3, 2, 3, 5, 6, negative 5, 1, 1, 1. And we are done. And all that is left is to take, I'm just going to go 1 half. And we'll see whether it's positive or negative here. Second matrix math the determinant of second matrix, matrix A that I just created. And we get area equals negative 28. But of course, that doesn't make sense. So we choose the negative option. And we get area is 28 square units. Just a good habit to get into 28 square units. Okay. And that is that. Now, the nice thing about this is if I had some weird convoluted polygon, I could always take that polygon and just divide it down, divide it down into tri into different triangles, like from here to there to there. I didn't do a very good job over here, but anyway, we can divide that down into different triangles and find the area of each triangle. So I could divide this into two triangles, find the area of that, but this looks suspiciously like a parallelogram. Let's take a look. To get from this point to this point, I have to go from up four to up eight. I have to rise four and run from negative four to six, run 10. And from here to here, negative three up to one, I have to rise four, run from negative eight to two, run 10. So not only are the, do these have the same slope and therefore parallel, but they have the same length as well. And that, that is a proof for, parallel, for a parallelogram if opposite sides have the same or congruent lengths and parallel. We could also do the same thing with these other sides as well and show that they're parallel. So I'm really just going to find, I'll call this area 1 here. So that area is going to be plus or minus 1 half times the determinant of, I'm going to start at negative 8 negative 3 and rotate counterclockwise to 2, 1, 1, negative 4, 4, 1. And I'm intentionally going counterclockwise. They didn't mention this earlier. If your orientation of the points that you enter here is counterclockwise, we would see that these are not if we drew it. If it's counterclockwise, you should get a positive. So. Let's see if that happens here. See if I'm on the money there. So second matrix edit. I'm going to just stick with matrix A. I don't need to preserve that one. Negative 8, negative 3, 1. 2, 1, 1. Negative 4, 4, 1. Second quit. 
second entry. And I'm right back to where I was, but just with a different matrix A, and I get 27. Area equals 27. Ooh, that's terrible, 7. 27 square units. Okay. Now, this is a different story altogether as far as the, the level of work here um, for a couple reasons. It says, find X or Y such that the coordinate has an area of four square units. Well, here's what I know. I know that the area four equals plus or minus negative four, two, one, negative three, five, one, negative one, pesky Y, one. And I can't use the calculator to find the determinant of this. Let's zoom in on this one a little bit. So I'm going to use our our kind of uh, our alternate method for finding three by three determinants rather than doing minors and cofactors. I'm going to go negative four two one negative three five one negative one y one. Repeat the first two columns. Double check my entries. If I think I'm good. And now the sum of the downward diagonals. This is only works for three by threes, does not work for four by fours, but this times this times this, negative twenty plus two times one times negative two, negative two plus one times negative three times y, negative three y. My upward diagonals, negative 1 times 1 times 5, negative 5 plus y times 1 times negative 4, negative 4y plus negative 6, 1 times negative 3 times 2. So let's see, my downward diagonal, this was a negative 2, I get negative 22 minus 3y. And I subtract that, or I subtract from that the upward diagonal, which let's see is negative 11 minus 4y. And I get, and, and that, oh, plus or minus 1 half, bad. And that should all equal, to get rid of the plus or minus 1 half, I multiply by plus or minus 2, that should equal plus or minus 8. So plus or minus 8 is negative 3y plus 4y, just y, that's kind of nice. Negative 3y plus 4y, y, and negative 22 plus 11 minus 11, so I end up with y could equal plus or minus 8 plus 11, y is either 19 or negative three, and we say, wow, how could that? How could there possibly be two triangles for that? Let's take a quick look here. If I sketch this, everything's negative. Everything's left, and these points are up. So let's do this. Let's go negative one, two, three, four, up one, two, three, four, five. I've got negative four, two, negative. 3, 5. So that is one side of the triangle right there. And the other side, the x coordinate is negative 1. It's somewhere on here. And it's pretty easy to tell that there must be some solution in here somewhere where the area is 4. Um, and as it turns out, I believe that's at down here. It's at least believable. However, if we were to extend this up, somewhere up here, somewhere in there, I have to create another triangle. No matter how high I go, I have to be able to create another triangle with area 4. And apparently, that is up 19. So there we have it. A little bit sneakier problem, number 12, but a great formula if you're given three ordered pairs and you need to find the area of a triangle. Wonderful use of determinants. And then we have a Kramer's rule problem. And Kramer's rule, it may, be, it may be worth, I guess before we go to Kramer's rule, let's talk about this. 
test for collinear points. And I will claim this is a terrible test for collinear points because if I was trying to find out if these three, if these points were collinear, these three points were collinear, I'd find the slope from here to here and the slope from here to here. And if that was equal, I'd be done and I'd know they're collinear. But think about this one for a minute. Let's say we're finding the area and we get zero. That means this determinant must be zero. And if, it, if three points don't, don't create an area, they don't create a triangle. It must, you know, it goes from being a really, really flat, tiny little triangle that has a little bit of area to all three of those points are in the same, are on the same line. So that's the test for collinear. But if I was just going about trying to see if points are collinear, I wouldn't do that. Okay. And then back to here again. Kramer's rule, you can come back and take a look at this. I'm going to go through Kramer's rule with you here. So here's the deal on Kramer's rule. For this two by two, we're going to get a plain old determinant I'm going to call D. And that is going to be the coefficient determinant. 6, negative 5, negative 13, 3. And then we're going to get a D sub X, and I, call, and I like sub, where for the X's, the x coefficient, 6 and negative 13, we substitute 17 and negative 76. But we keep the y's the same. And d replace y, we replace the y's, the negative 5 and 3, with 17, negative 76. We keep the x's, their original value, 6, negative 13. And now, I'm going to be really lazy on this. Two by two determinants, not too bad. Actually, I think I'll just do it on my calculator here. We could go, we could go into, I hit graph, excuse me here. We could go and write them in determinants. It's probably easier just to do this. Six times three minus, I'm just going to call it positive, positive 13 times 15. And we get negative 177. Oops, except it's not 15. Second enter. It's just 5. Excuse me. Glad I double checked. And we get negative 47. And then 17 times 3 minus, I'm going to go positive, positive, 76 times 5, negative 329. And D replace the Y's, 6 times negative 76 minus negative 13 times 17, negative 235. And how is that helpful to you? And this Kramer must have been, must have been doing a lot of work with systems of, a, of a linear equations to come up with this. Um, but great little rule. X is going to be dx divided by d, and y is going to be dy divided by d. And as you might imagine, people, they won't get the x's and y's mixed up, but they might get the fraction mixed up. So I say this. This d is a part of both answers. This d is foundational to this problem. And where is the foundation located? In the denominator. So dx negative 329 on negative 47, dy negative 235 on negative 47. So let's see, 329 divided by 47, 7, and y negative 235 divided by 47, uh, negative 47, second insert, or I know the final answer is going to be positive. Let's do that again. Negative 235 divided by negative 47. And still, one more time. Boy, if I wasn't proud, I'd remake this video. If I was, if I was proud, I'd remake this video. Negative 235 divided by negative 47. And we get 5, which we knew what, that's what it was to begin with. So our intersection is 7, 5, but our solutions x equals 7, y equals 5. And here's the good news. 3 by 3, same thing. D equals 4, negative 2, 3, 
2, 2, 5, 8, negative 5, negative 2, and I'm going to find that determinant right now. Double check, 4, 2, 8, negative 2, 2, negative 5, 3, 5, negative 2. So second matrix, I'm going to edit that 3 by 3, 4, negative 2, 3, 2, 2, 5, 8, negative 5, negative 2. Second quit, second matrix math, determinant, second matrix A. And I get negative 82. And let's find D, replace the X's. So our X substitutions are negative 2, 16, 4. Y's stay the same. Negative 2, 2, negative 5. Z stay the same, 3, 5, negative 2. Negative 2, negative 2, 3. 16, 2, 5. 4, negative 5, negative 2. Second quit, second enter. And that determinant is negative 4, 10. D with the Y's replaced. So the X's are the originals, 4, 2, 8. The Z's are the original, 3, 5, negative 2. But the, X, the Y's are the replacements, negative 2, 16, 4. Second matrix edit. I know I could just be editing these columns, but by the time you do this, it doesn't take too long. 2, 16, 5, 8, 4, negative 2. Second quit, second enter. Negative 6, 56, and D with the Z's replaced. And really what you might want to do on these is put the replacements in first, just like that. The replacements there, the replacements here. I'm going to put the replacements here. Negative 2, 16, 4. Now the originals. 4, 2, 8 for X. And negative 2, 2, negative 5 for Y. And we're almost there. Second matrix edit. 4, negative 2, negative 2. Uh-oh, second quit. Second matrix edit. 3 by 3, 4, negative 2, negative 2, 2, 2, 16, 8, negative 5, 4. And I think we got it. Second quit. Second enter. Matrix A, 164. So X is DX, negative 410 on negative 82. Y is negative 656 on negative 82, foundational, D. And Z is 164 on negative 82. Let's see, that is 5. That is 6. And Z is negative 2. And there we have it. Kramer's rule. Um, yeah, not my finest work, but, uh, but hopefully we got the point. And good luck to you. Let me know if I can help.